Welcome back to Small Bad Dad. Oh no, I'm on the wrong. What have I done? What have I done? Yes. Right. What does it mean, Dad? asked Frank. Why is she sorry? Because she's left. She's not coming back. No. Why? Your, your mum has gone to live in a big house with a small man. But I'm sorry, Frank. I tried my best for her, but my best wasn't good enough. I'm sorry, Dad. I need a huggle. Me too. Father and son held, each, each, held on to each other uh, tight and they, they cried and cried until they could cry no more. To his credit, Dad never said had anything about his wife, or by this time his ex-wife. But Frank felt deeply hurt that his mother had left without even saying goodbye. Even, even though she now lived in a huge house, Mum inv never invited her son to stay, not once. When she forgot her son's birthday for the second year in a row, Frank was in no hurry to see his mother again. Weeks and months passed, asked without any contact, so then it contact, and then it became unthinkable to, to call her, so he never did. Frank had never stopped thinking about her. However, it was still confusing because as much as, as she'd hurt him, Frank still loved her. Dad lost so much after the crash. Not just his leg, but his wife too. Soon he was about to lose something else else dear to him. His job. Gilbert loved being a banger racer, a driver. It was all he dreamed of from when he was a boy. Despite his pleas, the track owners banned him from ever racing again. They blamed him for the accident and never wanted to see him back on the track. What's more, they told him it wasn't safe if for him to race his cars with only one leg. So Dad tried and tried to get a different job, any job, but jobs ups in the town were scarce and a man with a wooden leg always found himself at the bottom of the pile. Dad was used to being a hero, but now he felt like a zero. Two old Christmases came and went. As time passed, Frank became increasingly worried about his father. Sometimes he would find the man sitting alone, alone in an armchair, staring into space. Often Dad wouldn't leave Eve the flat they lived in for days. No one beep eeped their horns anymore when they walked on down the street, and now they couldn't even afford to go to the pie and mash shop, let alone be giving him double or helpings. On Frank's 11th birthday, a dad bought his son a huge race car set. The boy loved it. It was the best toy ever. Dad even painted one of the miniature minis with a Union Jack axe so it look, looks just like Queenie. Together they would play with it late into the night, reenacting Dad's famous victories on the track. However, as much as he loved it, Frank worried where his father, uh, who'd been unemployed for a, a couple of years, had got all the money from to buy it. Frank knew that very few children had toys like these. Race car sets cost hundreds of pounds, and Dad did not have hundreds of pounds. Soon after Frank's birthday... Groups of hard-faced men started it banging on the door of the flat. They would have pieces of, of they would wave pieces of paper and bark about our unpaid debts. Then they would would push past Frank and force their way in. Once inside, the men would pick up anything they thought might be worth something and march out with it. First, it was the TV. Then it was the sofa. Then it was the boys' bunk bunk bed. One time, Frank wouldn't answer the door, and they simply smashed it off its hinges. That day, eh, they took the toy race car track. After these visits, Dad would become full of sorrow. A look of despair would cross his face, and he would sit in silence. Frank would do his best to cheer up his, his sad dad. Don't be down, Dad, the boy would say. I'll get all our stuff back one day, I promise. When I'm grown up, I'll be a racing, I'll become a racing driver just like you. 
Come here, son, give us a huggle. The pair would embrace and everything would feel all right again. They may have been poor, but Frank never felt poor in his heart. The boy didn't mind that his jumpers had so many holes in them, they were more or hole than jumper. He never cared that as he had to carry his books to school in a plastic bag that at always broke. Soon it became normal that they that um that their age they had just one working light bulb in the flat and they had to move it from room to room at night. That is because the boy had the best dad in the world. Or so he thought. Chapter 5. Top Secret One night over a dinner of cold baked beans in their cold flat, Dad made an announcement. Everything is about to change. A concerned look crossed Frank's face. Despite having, having nothing, the boy he liked things just the way they were. Dad rested his hand on his son's shoulder. It's nothing to worry about, mate. Everything is going to change for the better. But how? Our life is about to change. I've got a job. Brilliant, Dad. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy too, replied the man, though somehow he didn't look it. What's the job? Driving. Banger racing? Asked Fred Hank excitedly. No, said Dad. He gathered his thoughts. But I'll be driving fast, very fast. Wow, the boy with his eyes lit up like headlights on a motor car. Yeah, wow, and I'll be earning money, lots of money. We can get the TV back. The TV is boring. I like listening to your racing stories. All right then, mate, we can get the sofa back, the boy thought for a moment. It wasn't comfortable eating dinner sitting on a wooden crate. I don't mind the splinters in my bottom. Really? asked Dad with a chuckle. As the man laughed, he rocked back and forth on the crate. Ouch! I've got another one. Ha <laughs> ha! All right. I don't know what you really want back. What? Well, wait, no. I know what you really want back. What? Your race car set. The boy fell silent. He did miss that toy very much. I guess, Dad... I'm really sorry they took that away, mate. Don't worry, Dad. Frank could tell something was up with his father. He just couldn't tell what. What was this mysterious job? So what were you who be driving in, Dad? Race cars? No, this is just this is driving just as fast, but on railroads. Ambulances? No. Fire engines? No. The boy's eyes widened. Not for the police. Dad managed to nod and shake his head at the same time. That sort of thing. Yeah. The boy's brain breaks. Dad, what do you mean, that sort of thing? Well, it's top secret. Tell me, demanded the boy. It wouldn't be top secret if I told you. Well, it would be very nearly top secret. I can't, mate. Sorry. But I'm going to get paid. Big money. Really big money. And we are going to have stuff. Lots and lots of stuff. New trainers, toys, computer games, whatever you want. Frank watched with concern as his dad's eyes eyes widened. It all sounded too good to be true. But I don't need lots of stuff, Dad. All I need is you. This bird dad's this bird dad's balloon. Yeah, yeah, don't you worry. I'll be here. I ain't going anywhere. You promise? Yeah, yeah, I promise, mate. And you aren't going to get hurt? Asked the boy, the last thing he wanted for his dad to lose his left leg. Promise, said dad. He held up, up three fingers as on his right hand. Scout's honour. <laughs> you were never a scout. Don't matter. Now finish up those baked beans. I need, you, I need to get you to bed. Like all children in the world, Frank knew exactly, Frank knew exactly what, his, what time his bedtime was, and it wasn't now. But it's not my bedtime yet. He protested. By the time you're ready for bed, it will be. That logic, although sound, is deeply annoying. Not fair. Why do I have to go to bed now? Auntie Flip will be here any minute to look after you. Oh, no, sighed Frank. Don't be like that, Dad. She's only the family we've... She's the only family we've got. And best of all, she's always up for babysitting. I'm not a baby. I know that, mate. 
Why is it called babysitting? You mustn't sit on a baby. Ha <laughs> ha, Dad laughed. I don't know. Where are you going anyway? I just have to pop out for a meeting at the boozer. Can I come, Dad? No, please, pleaded the boy. No, this is grown-up stuff. Kids aren't allowed down the boozer anyhow. But I want to come. Sorry, mate, you can't. Now, come on, give us a huggle. Tonight, the huggle was tighter than usual. Dad always held his son a little tighter when he was feeling worried about something. Frank wasn't stupid. The boy knew something was up. He just didn't know what yet. Bye-bye. See you in the next one. Good.